everybody's ready, ready. We'll, uh, we'll get started now. Go ahead and uh, start off by uh, introducing myself as well as the other uh, people around the room. I'm John Blackledge. I'm a lead VMS here at Data Tech Sounds for Mercy Managed Services. Uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so today we're going to be covering a few uh, subjects here. If you look in the middle of the white agenda, in the middle there, we'll actually go through everything that we're covering today. Uh, you can hand that to uh, Jonathan in the back there. So we're going to run through uh, a couple of aspects. First, I wanted to talk about data tech and how we're really on the cutting edge of like, shaping the future of managed IT and where that's headed. We're going to talk a little bit about Versa Managed Services, which is our automation solution and managed service solution that we have here at data tech. We're going to talk about managed services as a whole. Uh, talk a little bit about what we're trying to do with our command and control of all your assets. And then we're going to really dig down into Kaseya. We're going to go over the overview of Kaseya and all of its features, as well as a real-time example of a real-world example of manual versus automated. Yeah. Yes. What's an asset? An asset is any device that you care about in IT. So an asset could be a computer on your network, it could be your router, or it could be your firewall. Just basically everything and anything that has to do with your connection to the outside world and the security thereof. Yeah, what phones are phones are, out phones are included, yeah. Okay, so data tech shaping the future of managed IT. So um, managed services actually came about as a cost-effective solution for companies. So it started as uh, every company having their own IT, full employed IT person on staff. Now as you know, that can get a little bit expensive, especially to get someone that actually knows what they're doing. Instead of that, you flip the model around, we have a company such as us that provides managed services and IT services to a variety of different companies thereby reducing the cost for yourselves and using automation, it saves us time and everyone else money. Um, so as you can see here, managed services really are designed to increase computer reliability, security, and stability. We really try to automate common security maintenance and optimization tasks on your PC. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. And really create a cost-effective solution through IT automation. Now, something that we do different than most managed service providers is we stay away from the cookie cutter module of you completely surrendering your managed IT services. So instead of you um, just writing off and saying, here you go, we'd like to give you an inside look about what's going on in your network, um, give you options to make decisions about how you would like to be managed or what IT decisions you want going on in your company. We also provide detailed weekly reports, which I'll go over in detail, outlining everything that's going on in your network as well as all the managed services or managed computers and devices in that network. So when we came at this, we really wanted to focus on command and control of your assets through a single provider. So our goal is to have a single point of access for all IT needs. So we spent a large amount of time in research and development to really find the perfect solution that will allow us through one console hop in there and take care of everything in a single location, saving us and less time and you guys money. So really the industry is heading away from the reactive break fist, which has a lot of amount of downtime. So if you have a computer, something goes wrong with it, it slows down, you have to call us up and then or an IT company up. Um, we have to respond to that ticket, call you back, log into the computer, see the issue and go from there. And it's actually gearing away from that towards a more cost-effective and automated approach. Uh, most of the issues that occur on a day-to-day -day basis are issues with download that you have on your device, um, cookies slowing down your computer, uh, files that need to be deleted or moved, and disks that need to be defragmented on devices. We actually automate all of those tasks to allow us to really focus on the complex issues of your network. So, we actually have scripts that run weekly on every managed device that will almost uh, eradicate those problems, really allowing us to really focus on stuff that needs someone to physically eyes on and look on it. And a lot of times, especially with our clients, uh, they really ask why they need to invest in IT, especially when they have a managed service provider, uh, when all their systems run just fine. 
And it's really the background autom automation and all these scripts that are running in the background that enable everything to go smoothly and let you get on with your day to day without having to worry about your IT. So how do we do all this? Well, the answer that we have is Kaseya. So all of our research, which we've tried several different companies that offer solutions that can get us here, but we decided that Kaseya was the best solution. Uh, Kaseya is actually the leading command and control software in the nation, or in the marketplace right now, that allows us to perform automation, patch management, remote support, as well as a plethora of other tools that allow us to best service your IT. Now we're going to get drill down a little bit more about Kaseya and how it works. Now, everything with Kaseya starts with network discovery. So when we have a new client we want to bring on to manage services, uh, Kaseya has agents that are actually installed on the machine. We install one of these agents uh, remotely, and this allows us to provide all these automated services as well as remote into the computer if the more complex uh, error occurs. So what usually would happen is we have a sales manager um, Todd Leeds does it, Mike Deming, will go on site and install one of these Kaseya agents. Through that, we can actually use network discovery and scan the full network that you currently have on site. And then from that scanned list and what's been discovered, we can actually deploy agents to devices that we want to bring on and manage, as well as deploy monitor sets to devices that aren't going to have agents, like routers and firewalls. And we can also monitor voice devices, printers. Yeah, printers, everything that we can scan, collect, and make sure it's working efficiently. So essentially, what happens is we have a agent, say agents gets installed, it scans the network, so now we have a bunch of unmanaged devices. We'll go through that and we'll choose which devices that we want to really create as a managed asset. What do we want to monitor? What do we want to deploy an agent to? What do we want automation to occur to? So we'll go through that and we'll choose to govern these within Kaseya. And once they're governed, we actually have um, the ability to manage. And as soon as you bring on a device into your organization, everything is completely configured for your organization to have the automation to occur. So patch management is configured. We have automation scripts, weekly cleanup scripts that are configured. Everything is good to go as soon as you have it, say, agent installed. And we also go one-on-one -on -one by you to see what is going on and see if you want to change that in any way based on your client needs. Um, this also allows us to, sorry, yeah, go ahead. So you're saying if I go and order a computer and a printer, if I have this, nobody, nobody on my staff has to sit there and program that, that because this is already installed, it's going to automatically put every driver on there, put everything that needs to be on there? It depends. If you give us, like, if we would have to set that up for one computer. So we need to know your settings first. So if we work with you, and you got a new computer, and we went through and decided you want this printer on these devices, you want this driver on these devices. Well, we can customize. Uh, it's basically like a do it once and then deploy to many type mindset. So we can configure it once in your organization, which we have large clients, say over 900 computers, where we configure settings for one individual device. We work with you on that. And from there, yes, you'll never have to configure one again because we'll use that deployment method on the other devices. So uh, it does take uh, work to begin with, but all the patch management, all the automation, and the scripts that are going to make sure your computer is clean on a day-to-day -day basis that's going to be applied to all machines across the board, that will automatically occur. Um, what if I realize there's one machine that's not being updated on a weekly basis? Um, that's why we send the reports out. So um, we want to investigate any issues like that. Um, you, you talk to me, I need to look into that. Sometimes there could be, uh, I've seen program issues or various things that cause patch <coughs> management to not work effectively. Now, not to get too much detail, say I actually use, uh, utilize Windows uh, patch scan and patch management software. So it pushes the patches through Kaseya, but actually scans the patch with Windows update. So it usually happens that there's an error with the device itself rather than a problem with the Kaseya side. So it's a bigger issue than that. This is why we get the weekly reports to actually investigate what's going on with the patches and make sure that everything's going to be up to date. Does everything have to be closed out? No. Um, and like logged out of the computer for this to work? No. Okay. These will uh, run automatically. Like um, so the way these work is everything's scheduled to run after hours. So you shouldn't have any effect on your day-to-day -day business at all. 
Um, what it will do is it will go through a plethora of scripts, including deleting temporary files and downloads. And for the patching, um, it'll actually, if the computer is turned on, all it needs to be on, whether it's logged in or um, as long as it's online, we'll be able to deploy patches to it and install. And right now, our current uh, reboot schedule to actually apply the patches is 4.30 a.m. on Friday. So patches, so the computer won't even be restarted until 4.30 a.m. on Friday. Yes? What happens if the, if the computer is off? The computer is offline. Um, we don't push out patches to offline machines because we don't want that computer to come online during the day, start downloading all these patches, and then it may freeze up the whole bandwidth of your company. So we need to make sure that's one thing that we request when we talk with you when we bring you on, that computers are on, online every Thursday night. That's when we push out patches. So if your computers are online Thursday nights, patches will be deployed. If they miss that, we do not uh, deploy it outside of that time frame um, because we don't want to interfere with any other aspects of your business. So it will wait until the next so it'll Sorry. So it won't download patches that Thursday, it'll, but the next time it's online, the next Thursday, then it will update the patches. Yes. What about uh, servers? Servers are done once per month, uh, on the second Saturday of every month. We deploy them Saturday night and we do a reboot for our servers on Sunday morning at 4.30 a.m. Which I can have a full list for the patch schedule that we'd send you out for servers and workstations that help clients all this for you. But um, servers we like to manage separately because we actually monitor and make sure the patches went through and the servers come back up online. Um, because it's a little bit of a bigger issue if servers aren't getting patched up. <coughs> so that's what we really focus on. And we don't, we don't automatically reboot every server. It depends on what function of that server is. Mm -hmm. We will not automatically reboot an exchange server, SQL server, terminal servers, things like that. We will. On um, exchange servers, SQL servers, we actually, that requires a manual restart. And Kaseo will tell us, it will give us a list of servers that, that are waiting to be rebooted to, to deploy, or not to deploy, to uh, enable all that or whatever. But anyways, yeah, you, it's a manual reboot on the, the higher end type servers. Depending on what the server role is and how much impact that would have on your company, we do uh, run reports that tell us the server has the patches waiting to be applied, and then we manually go in. And yeah, I mean, Hyper-V servers, for instance, think about that. you got a Hyper-V server with four or five virtual servers on it. Or I just reboot the Hyper-V server. Probably don't know that. So, does everybody know what a Hyper-V server is? Mine. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hyper-V server is basically a, a, a server that can house virtual servers. So you may have your chain server, your domain control, your terminal, your SQL server, all on one server. One physical server, they're all virtual. So you don't want to do that physical server for virtual flying. I got one question. So um, talking back about patching and stuff, is it necessary that every machine have every single patch that Nope. So that's one thing that, that's out in our patch schedule too. We do not push out feature updates. So you may see some patches on this many devices, but Microsoft also likes to hide patches in there, like a Bing toolbar or Internet Explorer updates or other software that you might need or want in a device that ends up just being local. And if you have a device that may be a little bit older and you're not thinking about replacing it, it slows that device down. We don't want to deploy all this extra software that's not really needed. All critical updates will be deployed to all workstations and servers. Um, then we can review all the optional patches and all the features that Microsoft tries pushing out. We decide if it's a critical update. And for servers, there's not going to be any option updates applied. And so, it's uh, actually, so you're actually better off not downloading most of the lot of the updates <coughs> that are critical to the machine. Because like you said, if you download some of these other weird updates that they push out, it's just, it misses the uh, option down to storage and nothing. And then we'll have support call to get in and find out why your your machine might Why I can't get to my bank anymore. Oh, yeah. well, Microsoft decided to put Internet Explorer 11 on there and it doesn't work for your bank yet. So we, we can we can block those. We actually have a few companies that we have policies set in place for them that say, okay, well, we can't have anything higher than Internet Explorer 8, I believe, isn't it? One we have one that's eight, eight, can't one go, that's ten. We yep. so we block any Internet Explorer patch that is above version eight. And we can get more in detail in the patch, and I could actually pull up our whole patch process if you guys want to stay after anybody interested in the patch process. I can bring up all the documentation and we can go through that. Uh, I'll ask, ask your question that, that we have. 
if I have older devices and you talked about them getting slow because of these updates that may because I don't have this that may be going through automatically or something, mm -hmm. does this program go out there and say, hey, this is what's slowing down your computer? I'm going to go ahead and take that off so your computer can get back up to speed. Because if not, I'm still in the situation where I'm, I'm doing a service call to say, hey, is it Red House speed? Is it data tech speed? Like, what's slowing my computers down? Because if my people can't work in a in a fast pace, I'm losing. The thing with that is, because they won't uninstall programs without direction. Because if you have something installed there and you did that on purpose, we don't want to automatically take that away from you and you're deciding, well, where's my software? What we do have, we have a lot of tools, especially in recording and auditing software, that will go through all installed applications, all add-in moves, all startups, that let us identify problems of slow computers before even touching the device. We'll actually go into some of our auditing uh, reports here a little bit down the line, it really give us detail. It tells us so much about devices and full touch. So a lot of uh, a lot of the stuff that we do, we could look up startup programs as well. We start off with that. We have a slow computer. What's running with this thing? Boots up. How many applications do we really need uh, uh, Skype opening up when we first turn on a, a computer? So we usually start with disabling those, restarting the computer, seeing what the issue is, and then really delving into adding more programs and seeing what we. There's something that's included, or you just yeah. send, like you guys send me a report, and I have to tell you, hey, I looked at this report, pull this, 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 and this. Whatever. So what you would do is you tell us you have a slow computer, and then we would look into that. And if you have a whole organization of, say, you have a whole company that's slow, or a whole site that's slow, we'll look into first. We'll start the bandwidth on the site, but if it's an individual computer, we'll go into these reports. That's all on our side. So all you have to do is, hey, I got a slow computer, and then look into it for us, and then we take it. But what, what, what additional thing going to your question there, with having the software running on all your computers, what we're really trying to do is make them all almost as identical as, as possible, right? So if something does happen, we have a faster mean time to get them immediate because we already know what we've done to them. We already know what the standard is. So we have a place to go and say, well, no, we didn't do that. And then we could look at internet history and see that you download Google Toolbar, and by the way, it put on being and ask.com and change your search engine and stuff so we can go in and just say bam, 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 fix that real quick. So, I mean, change it happens all the time. Chrome and I couldn't access a lot of stuff. Exactly. So, <laughs> stuff like that happens because just making little changes or downloading one little application can download a plethora of what they call spyware or spy bots or whatever just to go in there and mess with you. Mm -hmm. um, so that handles discovery about managing, uh, taking devices and managing them. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more about some Kaseya features. We're going to take a high level look at what Kaseya can do, including looking at the audit reports and a little bit about the detail that we see on our end when we have to troubleshoot a device. So automation is a key factor in the delivery of successful IT services. Kaseya provides an unparalleled automation of the everyday services that we deliver, allow us to create and automate services on demand. Uh, through procedures, Kaseya allows us to proactively uh, deliver service. Uh, it also allows us to um, have increased pr productivity, consistent service levels, maximum utilization of our staff and yours, uh, expanded service capabilities, and cost reduction. Now, automation in Kaseya is usually done through agent procedures. Now, we have a lot of stock agent procedures, like the, computer, the procedures that run every week to clean up your computer. We also can customize these in a one-to-many approach. So a lot of the times we work with in-client to create uh, packages of deployment for software, such as the 2X RDP program. So I work with our end-client. We'll get the configuration set on one device, and from that device, I can pull off the configuration then deploy it to all devices at once. So instead of having an IT guy go to each individual computer to try to configure these, we've done it once and I have it the other time in about five minutes just by the click of a button. Um, one example of this is we have one of our clients access healthcare. Um, they have a URL shortcut that they need to be deployed to every single device, which is over 900 computers in the network. It took me five minutes to create the script and it took me 15 minutes to deploy it on all devices. In 20 minutes, they had a URL shortcut on over 900 machines. One of the big things about Kaseya is the monitor sets that's included within Kaseya. So we have custom monitor sets to deploy in each 
server role. So if you have an exchange server, a SQL server, a file share server, we deploy these customized monitor sets that send us alerts based on the severity of an event. So if it's a severity three event, that's more informational, down to severity zero events. They are um, immediate events that we need to look at right away. Um, and we can also do this with events as well as services we process it. Now, the biggest thing about Kaseya is not only does it alert us about specific issues, but allows for automated remediation. So through the use of agent procedures, I can set up a monitor on a specific service, say on a third-party application that needs this process run. If the process stops and we have the monitor go through, I can tell it to run this agent procedure, restart that. So in a matter of seconds, I can resolve your issues before they A benefit of say as well is desktop policy management. So these agents give us complete control of the machine down to the actual settings of the device itself. Um, through the use of desktop policy, we can work with you to see what you want configured, but we can do power management. We can pre-configure maps, printers, and drives on this policy for your organization. So when you add it to your organization, it's automatically going to get mapped drives and printers. We can also, through this, back up full profiles. If you wanted to do a migration to an XP machine to a Windows 7 machine, we'd actually use this feature to pull all the profile information and then save it on a server or another machine on site and then deploy that profile to that new computer. So it allows for easy migration that can be completely done remotely. Uh, we could also set screen saver settings, wallpaper, uh, configure desktop icons, as well as look at any CD and USB drives that are currently attached um, and configure the default Windows security options such as Windows, Windows Defender Action Center settings. One of the big thing that we see on our end that helps us a lot support all of our companies within our network is the integrated monitoring. So Xe actually has a network monitor, the PRTG or SolarWinds. They're basically monitors that gives a high-level overview of every device in your network. It'll tell us any alarms, uh, downtime, anything that we need, we need to look at. It allows us to set thresholds for CPU, memory, and bandwidth. Just give a really detailed view of every device in your network, and then alert us if it's something that we need to look into. Um, two of the main types of monitoring uh, that we use are SNMP and WMI, which are integrated into most systems today allows us to pull very, very detailed information from every device. Um, and we can also monitor mail flow from exchange servers, making sure everything's running and all to send out test emails and ping uh, servers to make sure they're actually constantly on and working. So uh, monitoring is extremely simple in Kaseya. Um, essentially, you run network discovery, which we ran when we first integrated you into our or manage services. We add the devices that we want to see, and then we can automatically deploy templates that are already created to specific devices. And depending on what you guys would like to see or what companies would like to see in their environment, we could also set automatic remediation to that too. Okay, so a big one especially for our end client, is the amount of reporting that we provide on a weekly basis. So we actually have three reports that are extremely detailed that we send out every Monday morning. Um, so you can have a solid overview of your network so you know what's going on in your system. We don't hide anything from you. This is what it is. Um, so this is the executive summary. It's basically a consolidation of uh, and a high-level overview of everything in your network. We'll go over your total machines managed. We'll tell you your network health, which takes a bunch of information. You can see the scores there, patch scores, disks. It takes a look at that, gives you an overall health of your network. It'll tell you the disk percentage usage of all your machines in your network, the operating systems that you currently have been running, and operating system analysis, as well as patch status analysis. So that'll tell you how many machines are fully patched, how many are missing patches, and if you have any problems with this report, which we review, um, we can work with you on that as well. It also tells you what licenses you have on your servers and workstations. It can tell you how much Windows 7 machine. It really gives a very, very detailed view of your network. And this is another report that we send out weekly. It's the machine state report. And this report actually outlines every managed device. 
and it gives them a detailed machine state, including last logged on user, operating system, basic hardware, and network configuration. So if you need to find your device or you're missing a device or you want a device that's added to your network and you want to make sure it's here, this is the place to go to. And I have a question. Yes. I'm sorry. That's only if you have um, Kaseya on that machine, right? Yes. Okay. So if, if Kaseya is not on the machine, it's not going to be on these weekly report. These have to be managed assets. So this is actually one of my favorites. It's the weekly uptime history. So it'll go through every device. It'll tell you in the last seven days what percentage of uptimes it has. And then if you scroll down, it'll actually go through every device. And it'll tell you the times it was online. It'll tell you if someone was logged in. It'll actually, if you hover over this on the actual report itself, it'll tell you who was logged in. It'll tell you when they went idle, when they logged off, when the machine's offline. So if you want to look at um, why this is a, a big go-to is why patches aren't getting deployed. If the machine was not on Thursday night, it'll look here and say, oh, well, last Thursday your machine wasn't online. Can you please make sure it's online next Thursday? It also gives a, a high-level detail of every single aspect of the device itself. And this is from the Kaseya agent. It'll also tell you if the machine's online and not connected to Kaseya server itself, which is hosted here in our data center. So that lets me know that there's internet issues. So as far as uh, diagnosing specific issues with the machine, I usually turn to this report. We use that one a lot also. We'll have, uh, somebody might have done something on a computer machine or something like that. They can kind of pinpoint a time frame. We can actually go in here and go, okay, well, John Doe was logged in at that time. So. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. Yes. Now, I get all these reports. I don't really look at them every week. Now, let's say I have told all my users that they need to keep computer on Thursdays. Let's say a user for like two months shuts down the computer. <coughs> Do you guys ever monitor it to tell me? Okay, this user hasn't had their computer on for let's say two months and patches hasn't had them now. Do you guys look at that or? Yes, we actually take a look at that. We have a, a patch report. Um, we actually hired a new guy, Tony Gaddis. He's hiring. It's actually going to come in and it's going to take over the the patch manager. We're going to get a high level detailed view of patch statuses, um, which is another feature within Gaseya. We're going to really examine it. Now, um, a lot of the times we try to keep up with as many as we can, but we have over 4,000 machines in our managed network. So we do a review of all patch statuses, um, but if there's a specific machine you would like us to look at, um, the best way is to reach out to us and have us look into that and really examine it. And then at that point, we might want to examine if that patch policy or patch schedule is actually working for now again, all of the things that I'm going over and what I'm telling you are our default policies. All of these can be customized based on your needs. Say you don't have, or everybody turns off machines, you want everybody to turn off your machines every Thursday night, or every night when they go home. I can set it to deploy the patches once the machines turn off. I mean, all of this is customizable. I just want you to be aware that um, what implications that would have. So I would definitely have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you to alter any aspects of this. Okay. Also, in conjunction with that, it, if you wanted to turn your machines off every night, you can deploy a patch that would do that for you. So you can let your users know, don't worry about shutting your machines off. They're scheduled to be shut off at 4 o'clock every morning anyway, at 1 o'clock every morning once the, the maintenance and operations are being done. That's how we can shut them off and save you the power. It can be done, but uh, the suggestion is not to shut your computers down, log off, turn your monitors off, or leave the computers on and do all the maintenance at night. So you run into a, a, a situation where a computer tyrone is slow. And it, we can't fix it. We can't fix it. Well, we find out that well, if we shut the computer off every night, so the, the, the scripts aren't running, they're not doing it. We're not allowed to do our job because the computer's turned off. So, and, it, and if, it, if you do run into that, well, let's, let's go ahead and change the schedule. Let's do that at X time. Well, a lot of times what happens is it runs into work days and, you know, it, it hinders the performance of the computer while the, while the person's working on it. So that's why we like to do all that stuff overnight. All of our policies are really designed to have minimal impact on your work day. So we don't do any patches or scripting or virus scans unless the computer is idle, which we can dictate if the computer's idle, run this. Um, so we don't want you to be on your machine and it start running extremely slow, and that's because of an antivirus scan or a patch update is running. Um, I feel like that is extreme, more extremely frustrating than trying to tell people to leave their computers on. Because um, during the workday, you don't have time to 
deal with a slow computer or an issue that's going off and the, your end clients or your people that you're servicing or that you're servicing don't have time for that either. They need to get ready for this important meeting. So it's best to let us leave the computer on, let us handle it at night, let us run our cleanup scripts, all our automation, so you guys don't have to worry about that during the day. And if you have a client, uh, uh, an employee that just simply does not want to leave their computers on, let us know because through the magic of the say we can also deploy a script that will take that option away from them. Yeah, they wouldn't even be able, they wouldn't even see the shutdown button. Yeah. Right <laughs> I wrote that one myself as it takes off the shutdown and the restart button, so they can't really do anything at that point. We had an issue with, uh, with a software deployment. It was a company that needed to install specific software on 30 machines, and we had 15 machines that were off on every night. So I worked with them. We had uh, spent a week on this until I told them, hey, I could do this. Guess what? In two days, everything was done. So it's like we have uh, ways to get things done if we need. To. And again, none of this would be deployed without your permission, but there's a lot of thinking outside the box that can happen with this ad. Um, this is one of our ones that we use a lot as well. This is a migration readiness report. This is all done within Kaseya. So essentially, this scans the hardware capabilities of your current machines, it allows us to completely customize what's best for your environment. So say you have a third-party application running Outlook or 2X or any of uh, maybe a SQL server on a workstation, which you don't do. <laughs> we can put um, the amount of gigahertz you want in each device, the amount of, um, gig of free space you want in each device, the amount of RAM, and then run a report that's going to tell you all of these devices meet the requirement, but you have these devices that are missing RAM or missing CPU. So with this, we can really look in your environment and see if maybe there's a machine in there that's lacking the power for what you need. And maybe it should be considered for a replacement. You may even be uh, you know, moving to an application that has a, a minimal requirement for their software. Yeah, yeah, and you have a computer sure. sitting out there that's just not, this is not working. You can find out very easily or a way that doesn't even meet the minimal requirements of your software vendor wants it. Mm -hmm. So this is a detailed report, and Scott's very familiar with this report. We also have the ability to create yeah. custom dashboards. Uh, custom dashboards within Kaseya. So this is uh, configured, catered to a specific client depending on needs. If we have a specific server or specific machines that we want to monitor, and the monitor sets that we need to look at, say we have a server that's always running high on CPU every day at specific times. We can actually set up a dashboard for ourselves to show, hey, this thing is pinning out at 99% or anything like that. We can see trends and we maybe we can isolate specific times of day when this is occurring and then we can figure out what's going on most times of day. Um, we work with one of our clients, FPG, they actually have a JBoss server and a SQL server and we found that the JBoss was sending a lot of information to a SQL server at specific times of day and we were able to troubleshoot the issue and lower the load and do some balancing to fix it, all through uh, the same monitor. Now this is what you'd be interested in the most, Tyrone. This is Kaseya's auditing power. So when an agent is first installed on the machine, it runs a full system audit on the device itself. Um, this is everything that we have access to. So when you first open it up, just from a brief summary of the audit, we have all the information here, including um, the OS, the manufacturer, we could get the CPU and RAM. We actually get the system serial number. So we can replace any machine, any part in this machine relatively easily. And this is the overview. But <coughs> this is the software audit. Now I haven't gone through every tab here, but you can see the system information, which was on the summary, it pulls software licenses. So say you need to replace a machine that has um, Microsoft Office installed. Uh, with it, Microsoft 2010 and older, we can pull every single license and just apply that new license to a new device. Uh, unfortunately, with Microsoft 2013, they stopped storing licenses on the device, so anything 2013 newer, we won't be able to pull a license off. But if you have Adobe or any other paid sort of software, it will show up here. We can see all installed applications on the device. We can go through the add and improve Moodle and actually get removal scripts for specific applications that I can run via command shell and automatically remove it completely behind the scenes. Right here is your startup apps. This is a huge troubleshooting which uh, we have easy access to. You can actually, when you're viewing agent, you can say you hover over the device, 
click one button and go to startup apps. So you have a computer that's being slow <coughs> every day and they're not sure why. We can see what's being started up. Every single program that's in the startup for when the computer turns on, we can take a look at that with ease, as well as any other security products that might be installed. It's very helpful if you're going through a Microsoft audit. Mm -hmm. iTunes, what are yeah, and I can run, um, with that audit information, we have the ability to run reports. So if you wanted a specific, say, Microsoft licenses for all the machines in your network, I can run a customized say, report that says, look for Microsoft Office, look for a license key, give me a full report, and I can have in 15 minutes, I can have your full report of every single Microsoft license in your organization. Um, and with Kaseya Audits, um, Again, we also have the hardware side of things, which goes to very detailed um, network information, the chassis information, so we get the form factor. Before we even go on site, we know what this thing's going to look like. Um, we also get the motherboard version, and it's very helpful with uh, replacement parts. If we're troubleshooting anything else, such as printers, which show all attached printers, all configured printers, PCI and disk hardware, anything plugged into the motherboard itself, Disk volumes, which shows us disk space. We run disk space reports as well. We actually get disk alerts that we manage uh, at 10% or lower. We will um, go in there and see what the issue is. Why are our cleanup scripts running? What's the issue with the specific device? Uh, the partitions under that, as well as any disk shares that it's a part of. Now, can, can I access this? Or is it? Yeah. Okay, so I'm able to access this from Yeah. If you have a login to say you have access to all audits. Yep. So, I mean, that's a powerful tool, and if you want to, I do one-on-one -on -one sessions going over using Kaseya and using all of its features. We can it take probably about an hour to go through. I can work with you, and we can do it remotely and just run through everything, make sure you understand all the features of Kaseya. Okay, so Data Tech really focuses on the automation side of Kaseya. Um, so we provide to, uh, right now we have configured weekly scripts that perform disk cleanups, delete temporary files, flush DNS, uh, removes the .NET cache, uh, performs an IE, Internet Explorer deep clean, as well as additional high-level detail features. Essentially, what these do <coughs> is prevent problems before they occur. So we're deleting your cookies, we're deleting your downloaded files, we're trying to prevent your machine from being gunked up before it gets gunked up. So uh, these scripts actually reduce the number of tickets we get dramatically. One thing it's not going to do is it's not going to be able to stop a user from hooking up their own machine to use this. Okay. So if somebody goes out and clicks on it and downloads something to their machine, they're basically manually installing it at that point. And if it's something that will automatically clear up that machine, it's going to. If it's something that's going to sit in, you know, sit in your temp files or your cookies or sit there and wait, <clears throat> the next time the script runs, it'll clean it out before it happens. And, um, that doesn't happen on the server, so we, don't even, we can't download stuff on the server. Yeah, no, uh, you shouldn't be using a server for web browsing at all. <laughs> the server should just be used for that. So if you're accessing the internet on the, on the server, you're doing something wrong. So um, we still run uh, for servers as far as terminal servers. We have specific cleanup scripts. So say you have a terminal server. So you have a lot of these users that are remotely logging into this server to get remote sessions on. We actually have scripts that will go into those remote user profiles and move all the downloads in there. So it still works on, on terminal servers, but most of this, while they do run, um, it's not going to find anything temporary on us, so it's not going to do much. Um, automated patch scans and deployments through policy management. We talked a lot about patching. I can go over that again later. If you guys want to stay afterwards, I'll go more into detail about patching and how that works. Uh, we also run sm uh, weekly smart hard disk checks, so we want to be aware of a problem before it occurs. So we actually have a script that runs the smart utility, which is actually a utility on hard disks that will scan the, the hard disk running error and then send a report back. And actually we email reports of any errors that occur on a hard disk. So we can take a look at that and say, hey, we need to look into this and maybe we need to check this or look into it a little bit further. We also have customized... Here, go ahead. Sorry. Let's just say... Uh, because we have a server environment, it, does this work on and off the server? Um, so Kaseya actually runs through its own on-premise server that we have on the site. So it connects to all agents connect here to our data center. Is that what we're no, no. I can my computers can work on or off your server. Meaning, right. yeah. so, my, so what I'm asking you, on the server, as long as you're on here. 
So as long as I have a connection to the internet, it works. Yep. Now, are you able to monitor or stop people from doing like social networking, like Facebook, um, mm-hmm. uh, Instagram, Twitter, like all that kind of stuff like that? Can you do a patch thing? We can. Um, we look at um, cloud blocking solutions, but I think we use a third party utility yes. because that's going to be a high level filter over specific machines and get that level of detail of, hey, I want this site to go through, I don't want this site to go through. We actually have to use a third party application to do that. Which application do we But you should have a firewall. Yeah, I was going to say, normally we just have a firewall. It's not a firewall, but you can see it. It depends on the firewall. He has his particular firewall needs to be updated so the content filtering works. Yeah, if you have, as long as you have content filtering, yes. And you want to do that's that where firewall, you do that. Though, you do that the firewall content filtering plan. That's where you do firewall will be built in? No. <laughs> 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 and is our time that ability? Yes. Currently, Currently no. no. The new one you're the buying, one yes. Buy, yeah. Yeah. That's one of the key reasons you're doing it. Okay. If we're doing the same thing, you had one of the guys that was clicking on something yeah, and dunking yeah. up there. Right. <laughs> but in the solid goals, so in that, um, is that standard now, the content filtering, or is it As long as it's under support, it comes standard, yeah. Oh, okay. I know it used to be monitored, yeah. Yeah. but we can turn off right, right, right. if you want. So a lot of our customers say, no, no, we don't want to We don't want to lock our people out of anything. You know, we'll just deal with it when it happens. Well, it, it happens. And after it happens a certain amount of time, then it costs them a couple hundred thousand dollars, not hundred thousand, but a couple thousand dollars to fix several computers. And they say, well, huh, you know, let's, let's look into that content. And there's two ways you can do it. You can do just base content filtering, which is all the, the first things in your mind that you don't want them to do. You know, the triple X sites, the free sites, the real estate site, it'll block the us. It'll let you do Facebook and YouTube and stuff. So if you don't want it to do Facebook, YouTube and stuff, then those are additional ones you can add to level two, if you will, and it'll block all that. All the way down to blocking everything but specific sites. So and it's, it's up to the administrators of the company, which what you want to or not allow. Yeah, it can be. It actually, it, it works really well, but what you, you don't want to do is block everything and then allow. You want to allow everything and block. The mm-hmm. reason being is you may, if you block everything, you say, oh, I want this one website. Well, there may be links in that website that you're clicking that you're not getting to those because you have to, so it's a lot easier to allow all and then weed out what you don't want as you go. Mm-hmm. So, um, as far as the Sweetly Smart Hard Disk or your alerts for that. Um, we've also created custom scripts to pull additional information that are more detailed than Kaseya offers or um, specific information that we want to see. Um, so Kaseya actually has columns and tables that can completely be customizable. So I can create a field in Kaseya for a device and call that device antivirus. So I can have that on a report now and pull anything I want with that. Now I have a script, an agent procedure, that I've written that actually goes through the admin program, see which antivirus installed, the version that's installed, and then puts that in that field. So now I have a field filled with data that I've put in there that I can run a report on, which I do constantly with all sorts of things. One of the biggest requests we've had is NIC speeds as well. So I created a custom agent procedure that will pull your NIC speed. So what is your card configured to run at? So we have a lot of internet issues. Well, their NIC could be a 56 kilobit. NIC card. You're not going to be able to get the full gigabit connection of your router if you don't have a NIC card that's going to be compatible or allow the speeds that you're looking for. Um, so a lot of us, a lot of the stuff that we focus on is automated remediation, which we do a lot on the back end for services, process, as well as events. And we're constantly growing and evolving to suit any needs. I mean, I configure custom major procedures all the time based on applications that are used and new applications that are coming to the environment. So the risk manager service is really a, a centralized information management system that combined all aspects of IT into one easy to use and automated system. The entire IT infrastructure and management of every node is at our fingertips and if you're IT savvy, we actually give you access to all of these tools as well. So um, some of our clients now, we do uh, limit the features depending on what how savvy you are because we don't want you getting in there and, and breaking things. But at the base level, you'll be able to go in there and see all the audit information, pull reports, and uh, at least get the information about your environment. 
And we have high-level IT systems administrators who work with uh, companies that have all aspects of the SAN allowed to them. And they understand the risks that go along with that. But, I mean, you have all the software that we have at our fingertips, you can have it yours. Okay, so the biggest issues and the solutions that we solve, um, as far as an IT company goes, is that there never seems to be enough time, especially for an IT administrator, to do all the things that you need to do. I mean, if you take a look at all the stuff that usually goes through an IT professional's list, you deploy new systems and software, configure and optimize the computer experience, update machines with patches and other software releases, uh, monitor system devices as well as network traffic, run daily maintenance routines, log and take action to computer failures and security, uh, report key findings to the executive team, and remove and update antiquated system software. Most of this we are able to automate through the use of cassette. Okay. Now I wanted to go over a manual versus RT automated scenario, but we have 15 minutes left. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that and then we're going to go on to the QA session. So as far as uh, manual versus automation, there's a lot in a day-to-day -day that we handle on the back end that we can resolve completely through Kaseya. Um, a lot of applications that need to be pushed out, any custom application that can run via command line, uh, can be pushed out through Kaseya. So say you want all your devices to have Notepad or a specific type of application like Adobe Reader or anything like that. We have scripts that can actually push out and install those. So instead of going to each individual device, as an IT professional would make with your USB stick, popping in there, running the installer on that device, and moving on to the next one. With our software, we actually can push it out to all devices in the network at once. And say you have a new computer that you want brought on to our managed services, instead of sending a tech out to install this agent, or say agent, onto this device, maybe a remote location, we can actually use network discovery, scan your network, send any new devices that are currently attached to the network, deploy an agent to that, and set up any configurations that you want, uh, all, or even just apply the configurations that you have on, in place automatically. So that's all done, and it takes a lot of time out of your day and gives it back to you to do other things. Okay, now I wanted to go over any specific questions and answers that you had. Go ahead. Let's take branch all the six, for example. Yep. Um, we set up grounding systems, switches, the whole nine yards, computers, and hardware. Mm -hmm. um, they have a contract with you. What length of time would it take for you to get all those computers activated? I mean, we could rush it. Uh, we usually give a month for onboarding. That's mainly to get all the paperwork done as well as get up. But we can keep you up and running uh, if we rush it in three days. Now, I'm not promising that. <laughs> I will not say that I have field techs available to do that. But feasibly, if everything went smoothly and we had all ducks in a row, we can get, and depending on if you had everything configured correctly. So say you have five branch offices and you have VPNs attached to all the offices. So you can access all your office from one centralized server and location. Yeah, if you have a domain that, yeah, controller, it's something. If you have a domain, I can deploy everything through Active Directory in a few hours. So again, it really depends on the configuration of the network. So if everything's on the domain, everything's configured properly, I can get you up and running in no time. If you have individual isolated subnets separating each one of those branch offices with no VPN connection, and I don't have remote access to begin with, it's going to take a little longer and we have to deploy, or we have to send a field tech out or send you a link to install one agent of uh, the site itself. So again, it's a hard question to ask and answer without really knowing the environment, but we do a full network assessment before we even bring you on board. We actually run uh, a rapid fire assessment tools which really scans out searches your whole network, tells us what's out there and what we need to do and maybe steps we need to take or advise other improvements besides just going to say maybe getting VPN setting up for your remote site so you can have access to that. As far as as far as deploying um, agents, <coughs> it's all about credentials. So if you're on a work group, it makes it a bit tougher because how many you may have ten computers on a work group, how many of those are going to have a like administrative account on each computer. That's why when you say on a domain, obviously you have a domain administrator, you put it on the, on the domain controller, use the domain administration credentials, you can hit every computer in your organization like that. 
So it makes it simple to deploy on domains. It's a little trickier when you have workers because of credentials. Yeah, and if um, you don't have a similar credentials on every computer, it's actually easier to send a field tech out to actually install the software because if you don't have a shared administrator, that usually means everyone's administrator. So I could just, I've done it before, where I pop onto a location and actually take an Xavage and via USB and just pop onto every device really quick. It takes three minutes to install a say agent, hop on to the next device, and I get a whole office done in no time at all. Yeah, sometimes that's a lot quicker. I mean, we we're running into a situation right now where we, we needed to deploy to 800 some odd, excuse me, 800 some odd uh, units. And um, the ones that were the, the four or 500 that were on a domain were done in less than a day. And we're still working on the work with it. And it's, again, it's all about credentials. We actually just spoke to the client this morning. Uh, we may have to deploy technicians just to get it done because of, well, I can't access this computer only because of the credential. I mean, we can see it, we can discover it, but we can't access it because the, the credentials are not there. Does that make sense? Yeah. And uh, we work with you as far as best solutions, as far as maybe, well, we need to deploy, a, uh, get a server out there and deploy a domain for you, cloud managed services or your access to devices to be easier. Um, that's one thing we'll discuss with someone like uh, Todd or Scott. They'll really uh, do a detailed analysis of your environment and what would work best for you and us. Yes. So um, you mentioned a lot about uh, manage assets. Um, mm -hmm. And what I do, we manage assets, but it's a totally different <laughs> well, <a little> bit. <laughs> asset. But um, I, I, see it, I hear a lot about the access that you have. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're always concerned about security and information. What um, what do you have in place? I know you mentioned something about the... Um... So what we have in place is, and we work with individual clients to see what they would work best. Um, by default, what we recommend is to allow us to even immediately take control of the device. That way, if you call with an issue and there's a problem that needs to be resolved, uh, I can hop onto that workstation machine, talk directly to the end user, and take access. However, there are security features that we can implement. Say you work uh, in insurance, you're dealing with a lot of very sensitive material. Uh, if you have specific users or the old company, if you need to, we can actually have it so we can request, we have to request authorization to log into your device. So we'll actually pop up and say, hey, uh, data tech would like to access your device to you know, resolve the issue. And you would have to click OK in order to allow us to log into that device. So there are security that we can implement. It does make support uh, a little harder to go forth, but if it's something that you are concerned about, well, we do have a few clients now that can do require that where they don't allow us in the lessons unless they say, okay. And like, like John just says, where that, where that becomes an issue is sometimes you may see something on a computer uh, during the day that you need to rectify and when you call the client, they're like, well, right, I can't have you do it now, do it tonight. Well, if that feature's invoked, we can't do it at night because there's nobody sitting at that computer at the time to allow us. The only thing we can do it's okay, Mr. Customer, then you're going to have to allow us to remove that feature so we can get to it. And you can do it granularly to, you know, you have 500 computers in the organization, you only get this one, you can leave every single one where it has that, and then you can say, okay, we're just going to get it. So it did, but John is absolutely right, it does make it a little trickier, you know, to, to, to support. And we, we tend to find that type of thing, the people that, that, that continuously turn their computers off, that sort of thing, that's where you run into these remediations that we need to do that, you know, should take an hour and three days later we're still trying to get on the computer to begin with. So. Can we see when you all actually access, yes. say we gave you full yes. um, access, we can see yes. the times that you've gone on. So everything in Kaseya is documented. Any change made to your device in Kaseya, including remote login sessions, it's all documented, all could be run a report on. Now, uh, we don't typically send that out, but I can configure that all the reports that we have can be configured to send out weekly. So you want to see which technicians or if data tech has been accessing your devices that run a full remote control report, schedule that to run weekly on your devices and be emailed directly to your inbox. So you can see, oh, well, these devices, oh, that's fine, they have an issue. Oh, why did this person log into my device? Which doesn't happen <laughs> usually, but um, it's definitely something if you want more clarity, we can give as detailed as you like. I'm telling you something that's really not part of this summer, but it's kind of cool, especially if you're talking about security. Mm -hmm. um, let's say you have laptops, and a laptop comes up missing. We actually have a script that you can tell us laptops are missing. 
we can invoke a script that says as soon as that thing comes back online, it wipes it out. We've also had um, a laptop that was stolen, a couple, a couple of them actually, and uh, didn't invoke that because the client didn't want us to because we got the IP address when we checked back in and they actually were able to send the police to the person's house and arrest them right there while he sitting on the computer. So the security wise, it's actually pretty, pretty good. And as far as the remote control that you're talking about, obviously if there's not an agent on the machine, you can't remote control it. So it's all you know, in that cocoon of Kaseya. And then the only other thing I would like to say that you didn't mention that I think you should is we did a lot of research on a lot of different MSPs. And Kaseya for us works best. In addition, it's one of the most expensive ones out there too. So we wanted to get what was going to be best for our clients, not so much just to make a buck. So because we absolutely Kaseya is much more expensive than every other one. Much more. It does, more. it does a lot more too. I mean, it, it, we can get way more granular with, with Kasey and what we do versus what the other ones would do, which I'm not going to mention any names because we have a cease and desist right now. But uh, <laughs> I know why I didn't bring up the law. <laughs> I, 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 I know that, that, that didn't come at all. But uh, we just want you guys to know that, that we're not just doing it to make a buck. Where we, we want to give you what the best is out there. And like I said, it, 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 this is the most expensive. We make the least amount of money. Um, Say the other ones we could have made a lot more money, but this for our clients is going to be the best for us. And so everyone can say it. Just to note for everybody, too, what he mentioned about the laptops, mobile workstations, home workstations, we can also do with phones, tablets, all that stuff. We can put agents on them simply just for tracking purposes. So if they come up missing, so we get stolen out of the car, we'll be able to find them and if not really get them to receive them. Once they hit the internet, we can automatically wipe them and get all your personal and or business information on and as far as security, one of our biggest verticals is medical, which is HIPAA compliant. So you got to believe that we have to be very, very security conscious. So. We're planning to implement 15 tablets on our shop floor. Is there a limit to how many you can nope. input? Nope. But so before you do so, I would contact your technical account manager or salesperson, and let's go out and review your network with you and see what you have. because. I had another company do that too. They decided to deploy tablets all of a sudden one Monday morning, and then they ran into firewall access issues that same Monday morning because they went over their limit. Really? Well, I'm okay. Yeah, I'll talk to you. The limit on the firewall, right? Yes. Because yeah, of the firewalls, the sonic walls that, that, that we sell, the older ones. Oh, the older ones. They, they have limits where you, you're only buying a 5 user, a 25 user, or no limit. So that's what Tom's talking about. I've seen oh, it a lot where all of a sudden you have people throwing computers on networks and everybody can get on the internet except for these three computers. And they, I don't know why. And then you run the router and go, well, you're over your limit. That's why. Let me reboot it. And it's like the first 25 get on. The other three, it's kind of like musical chairs. Yeah, Bob, yeah. Somebody's going to, some, three people going to be out. It can create quite a problem. It did for this company. I mean, it took us, uh, it took us a good two weeks to figure out what was going on because it was intermittent. Well, that's funny that you said that. Because yesterday I went on to see I have a, you have a Wi-Fi, and there was a limit of ten, but I was able to bring it up to twenty. You didn't tell me, you know. Mm -hmm. So I don't. Some of them that too. Where you can change them. Yeah. yeah. That's that's cool. There was a question online asking about mobile devices. Um, can you turn Kaseya on when they're at the workplace to to limit them from? certain websites and things like that and turn off when they leave the workplace? Yeah, um, they have geolocation, uh, depending on the network IP that you're attached to and the connection. Are we talking, as far as mobile devices, are we talking cell phones or are we talking laptops? Yeah, just laptops? mobile devices. So it um, say actually has a very own module we can get into, it's mobile device management. I actually just came out with an update with, which we will update, we updated our server on, uh, not this weekend, but weekend later. So we have a full mobile device management update, which really allows you to deploy, it's not going to be have the full features that Kaseya has on the operating system, but it will give you a lot of devices such as geolocation, so you can set up a geolocation around your office, so if that phone checks in, in around your office, these settings will occur. Hmm. And once you go into the office, you'll block certain websites, maybe um, set the phone to silent, um, 
You can install applications that your cousin get your uh, <laughs> get set up to. Uh, we install a specific applications on the OS, like say you can go to Play Store and download an Android application. Maybe your company wants everybody to have a specific application on the phone. Like push that out right through mobile device management. So it's a very detailed tool that we can really Just uh, take control of my phone, huh? That's an okay. <laughs> that's another hour lecture that I can get into. Um, but if you're, you're interested in that, I'd be glad to talk to you. Okay, any other questions? This is going to sound like a silly question, so just I'm trying not to make it feel silly. <laughs> <laughs> Early on, you said that it had the serial numbers for every computer, which makes ordering any parts really easy. But that's not included in the, in the fee for Kaseya, is it? Yeah. Well, as far as I told you. <laughs> 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 Or, or our VMS solution, we have two solutions. We have a live, which is basically all the remote work is included in that. It's a monthly fee per device. And we have Versa Elite, which is our, our more uh, all-inclusive. That includes on-site and remote labor. So if it was a, a hard drive that fails on one of your computers, all you'd have to do is base the hard drive. The installation of that part and remediation of the PC would be included in the work. So it's based on your contract, which you could talk to Scott or Todd about that and give him more details. That was one other part you had in there too, where uh, you was talk you talked about like gigabytes and memory and all this stuff, and then like give you a price thing. Allstate's coming out with like this whole new data version that they have to have. If I got a copy of that and gave that to you guys, you could go through and scan, yes. and then make it in. You'd be able to send a report to Allstate and say he's compliant. Yeah, I can see. So I, we can pull up the um, any sort of application that's installed and the version number. So what I'd do is I'd run a report on every device and get that information for you, split out by device, and say, hey, if these machines that have devices with this version, these machines need to be upgraded, this, these machines need, are good to go. That's easy. So you could be able to tell whether whatever specifics they want, whether the computer I currently have could be updated, or I have to just completely trash that when you get the one they want together. Right? Exactly. We could get that report to you once you made the, the, the changes. And then when the report you pass, then you can send that report to them and say, hey, I've met all your, your requirements. Here we go. And we get very granular and very detailed with any of the stuff that you say this one. Okay, well, I'm going to wrap this up here. Um, if anybody wants to stay later and no, talk no, about... Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. You didn't talk price. No, that's because I'm not a price no, guy. Yeah. Yeah. Talk yeah. Yeah. I, I purposely <laughs> avoid every conversation about price. That's not... Stop right here. We'll be glad to talk to you about that. This is more than happy. So anybody I know, I will go to the stage and talk about this past night. Thanks. Thank you.